Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Brother, today we're going to talk about OCD, sexually intrusive thoughts, and the right mindset, the right reframe, the right way to view them. This is based on a video a brother dropped in our group, you know, in our implementation program and the intensive program. We really encourage brothers to be vulnerable. And it is so helpful to be able to go into a safe space. I really mean a safe space where you will never be criticized, where you will never be judged, where no one is going to shove dogma down your throats. A place where everyone is loving and open, supportive and experienced. So just open up and let people know what's going on in your life. And this brother shared something that many of you, you listening to this may have gone through, which is the strong emotions that come up when you deal with sexually intrusive thoughts. I've been there myself too. In some brothers, you know, you view pornography and there are certain deviant thoughts, certain deviant things that you might watch that can really disturb you. And when they become intrusive and they are deviant and they are persistent, it leads to a lot of brothers feeling depressed. And it even deepens that feeling of being out of control. It's like watching pornography that is, let's say, based on incest or watching something that has, you know, quote unquote, barely legal teens, that is, you know, women who are over the age of 18, but are made to look like they are much younger, that can make you ask yourself, hey, am I a, am I a pedophile? Am I really into these things? Now, it gets complicated when a brother has obsessive compulsive tendencies. There are some brothers who, in order for them to feel better about themselves, even after they've relapsed, they feel that they need to watch quote unquote normal straight pornography in order to feel like, okay, I'm not a pedophile or I'm not into incestuous stuff or I'm not into gay pornography. And so they've already relapsed and they're already in the cycle. You're there, but then you're like, well, I'm going to watch porn again so that I can feel okay. Or you're, you, you spend 90% of your time viewing a certain type of pornography that doesn't really make you comfortable. Outside of viewing porn, you would never engage in that. You're not even interested in that. But then your obsessive behavior kicks in and obsessive thoughts comes in and you're like, oh, no, no, no. But I'm in order for me to orgasm from this quote unquote session that I've been engaged in, I must view normal pornography. And then that just continues in a cycle. For some brothers, they take this beyond their pornography viewing and just go through their days randomly freaking themselves out over their behavior. So what this does is that it, it makes your addiction cycle feel much worse than it actually is. It makes you feel that the type of pornography that you watch is really impacting every aspect of your reboot capital. And as somebody who's been through those phases, it is a depressing, horrible, absolutely crushing, dark feeling to walk around with this cloud of unhappiness around you because you're scared that you are not normal. You're scared that you will never be free of the horror of this behavior, that you are fucked up and broken in some way. You can walk outside on a sunny day, but deep inside, you feel terrible. Those thoughts just keep coming into your head. Now, during a relapse, it's even worse. During a relapse, you are looking at people and seeing things. For example, a guy who's de dealing with 
homosexual obsessive compulsive disorder is walking around and seeing guys and thinking like man like why am i looking at these guys i'm not looking at them because i'm attracted to them i'm looking at them because my obsessive compulsive tendencies is checking to see if i am actually gay not because i'm gay but it's actually checking out the guy so you're actually wiring yourself and you know this you don't need me to say this you're actually wiring yourself to do the things a gay person would do in the process of trying to protect yourself from it which leads to the most important point about any sort of obsessive compulsive disorder which is co-occurring with your porn addiction this is how you free yourself from it and you free yourself from those intrusive obsessive compulsive thoughts by realizing that your ocd in most cases, showed up in your life as a way to protect you from something. It showed up as a way to protect you and to keep you at a certain baseline. That's why you kept doing it. But it evolved into something else. If you are at a point where your OCD has led you down a path to sadness and depression, I highly recommend cognitive behavioral therapy with a therapist. Whether it is with a therapist in your city or you get on one of these apps, there are lots of wonderful apps like BetterHelp and speak to somebody. And if you want somebody who is well-versed in the porn reboot system, you're more than welcome to sign up and see if you're qualified to work with Dr. Rankin or Dr. Eastman, who can also help you with these intrusive thoughts. But the most important message that I want to share with you guys is that when you have these intrusive thoughts and when your OCD keeps you in this cycle, what happens is that you end up creating a mountain of your reboot. So for instance, when you break a boundary, a guy who's rebooting goes like, well, I broke that boundary and I set up so many. I had filters on my computer. I had a dumb phone. I didn't bring my phone to bed. I had accountability partners. I had a freaking lockbox. I would lock my computer. Like all these things you did. A guy who's rebooting could cross all these boundaries and slip, but he's not going to freak out because he's a true rebooter. He understands that there were some other factors, such as self care, which could contribute to him breaking his boundaries. By the way, if your self care is not together, it doesn't matter whether you put your phone in a safe, lock it, and throw away the code. You're going to find a way to slip or relapse. But the brother who's rebooting just understands that the more quote-unquote intense the slip or relapse is, the more effort that he put into breaking his boundaries, the more data there is to learn. There's usually just one or two things you need to learn from a behavior that caused you to break five or six boundaries at one time. But those one or two things you learn, they are absolute gold. They are gold. They're better than anything that you're going to read in a book. And that's going to, why they gold? Because they're going to prevent five or six behavior breaking boundaries at in one fell swoop. Just two things you do. So when you engage in your behavior, when you have uh, sexually intrusive thoughts and you're dealing with OCD in addition to that, you will look at your slips as, as even worse. You're like, oh my God, it's so bad. It is so bad. Like, like I'm breaking all these boundaries and I, I watch pornography and when I'm done, I watch pornography I don't want to watch, I engage in these things and then after that, I need to go through all these little rituals of watching normal porn or doing whatever it is that you do in order to feel like a regular person and I have these obsessive compulsive thoughts. This is going to spill into your reboot. Your obsessive compulsive thoughts spill into the very process of you trying to analyze a slip or a relapse. You start noticing that you're creating little rituals around it. Like some of these rituals involve you talking yourself out of it. <laughs> There'll be conversations going on in your head about why it's pointless or why maybe this doesn't work. And 
you're in trouble when your addict sub personality, and if you guys don't know what that is, when you become a part of the program, you'll understand it better, jumps into that OCD conversation. It's like, oh, 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 okay. You got some something, some compulsive thoughts going on. Well, let's take advantage of that. It could pick on anything. It could pick on the belief that it doesn't really matter. You will always break boundaries. And then you find yourself in a loop where you have to break the boundary. Why did you break the boundary? I don't know. My OCD made me break the boundary. It's like you have to, you have to do this. Or it is better from, I'm just giving examples because there are so many of them. I'm just throwing out some I've dealt with in the past and some that I see clients dealing with. It's better for me to view pornography than it is for me to deal with the strong urge for multiple hours. Oh, I've been sitting here fantasizing about acting out. I better just watch porn so that I can calm down. That becomes obsessive compulsive. So each time you end up having a fantasy, you now have to, of acting out, usually acting out in a way you don't want to. Let's say you want to act out in a homosexual way, or you want to act out even though you're not gay, or you want to act out with escorts or transgender individuals or whatever it is, you now have this loop where you're just like, must watch normal porn to feel that I am okay. But what if you're having these fantasies on a daily basis for a period of time? Does that mean that you have to watch normal, quote unquote, pornography in order to feel normal? Well, according to your OCD, yes, you have to do that. The most important thing is to break this down, brothers. Instead of making this a mountain, and this is literally what I shared with that brother, break it down into small little hills. What does that mean? It means that each hill is a different issue. Your OCD is one issue. Sometimes your intrusive thoughts are another issue. And then your out of control sexual behavior is yet another one. They are all separate. Sometimes your OCD was there with you from childhood. It just so happened that whenever an addictive behavior comes into your life or some other compulsive behavior, it just melds very well with your OCD. Your OCD will act up, so to speak, in any situation where it feels you need protecting from something. I need protection from my intrusive thoughts. I need protection from pornography, which I consider to be bad illegal, deviant, dangerous, it shows up. It's not really doing you any good, but that's the purpose. But when you separate it, then you can apply tools to those different issues. There are tools you can apply to your sexually intrusive thoughts. There are tools that you can apply, usually CBT tools, to your OCD. There are tools that you can obviously use to deal with your strong urges and tools you can apply even after you relapse. But the final part about this is, I will admit, this is actually not for me. This final part that I'm going to share, call it more, more of a postscript, is from a comment another brother dropped. It's a long comment. It was a great reminder for me as well. Um, let me see if I can pick a piece of this and read it from this comment. He says, your reboot is not about pornography. It's about me. It's about your relationship to your behavior with pornography, not about any particular pornography or any particular way you were aroused. And this brother responded and said, you know, he, in his response, he's still saying this. He says, I say this in response to what you said about feeling like you had to balance yourself out with normal porn after you were aroused or orgasm to something that made you uncomfortable. It is truly not about the pornography. It's about you. You may have deviant sexuality i might too but that is not relevant to rebooting it is not relevant because the long-term addiction to pornography creates the confusion and the quote-unquote deviance so there is no normal porn for us addicts he says i also believe that it creates anxiety to a large degree even anxiety related to sex and he goes on and finally ends it with saying that Reserve all judgments about yourself because it's very likely that you have underestimated the depth and the breadth of this addiction has had on your life, your emotions, your perception of yourself, your sense of meaning and purpose, mm -hmm. so many things. This brother knows who he is when he listens to this podcast, but I really appreciate you for sharing that. 
And that is true. I couldn't have said it better. It is not about the type of pornography you watch. Don't get caught up in that. It is not about that. It is about focusing on your reboots. As you go through this process, understand that you are not thinking with clarity. You just need to allow your brain to reboot. This is why I've not really been a fan. You guys already know this about of like diving into the root cause. Why do I watch this type of pornography? Why do I do? This is not going to help you end your out of control behavior. It really isn't. It's like guys who are struggling with their physique. They're like, oh, I find it difficult to lose weight. Or I find it difficult to put on weight and put on muscle. But why is it that my body is this? What is wrong? What is it about my genetics that makes me this way? You don't need that. You just need to follow the plan. If you go visit with a personal trainer and the personal trainer goes like, yes, I have helped hundreds of men and women lose body fat. In most cases, this is what you have to do with your diet, your macronutrients, and your exercise. All you need to do is follow the personal trainers, the experienced personal trainers, training and advice, and you will lose weight or you will put on muscle. And many of you know this. Many of you are just like, I'm not, yeah, I'm a guy who's, I'm a bigger guy. I understand that I need to diet and do this and do this. But instead, you'll be attracted to research and studies and YouTube videos and podcasts that talk about, well, you know, for some people going full carnivore or going keto or going this is better because their genetics are this and this and this. And you need to diet according to your, you know, your background and your ethnicity and your body type and all this sort of nonsense. I'm not saying none of it is relevant. I'm just saying that your ultimate goal in the moment, the thing that's affecting your self-image is the fact that you're fat or the fact that you're skinny and you can't put on muscle. But you know deep down inside that doing the work is hard and you keep searching for certainty. Oh, you know, it's going to take me months and months of sticking to a diet and going to the gym on a regular basis. And that terrifies me. So I'm just going to find excuses. I'm going to say, well, 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 I don't want to commit to this personal trainer because what if it doesn't work? What if I end up spending time and money on this, but nothing happens? It doesn't change. That's actually what your fear is. You are afraid of taking the risk to do the work that is going to help you change your life. You're doing the same thing with your reboot. But the truth is, guess what? That 90 days it's going to take for that really great experienced trainer who has facilitated hundreds of transformations to transform you is still going to pass and you're still going to be fat. For those of you who are like, well, I would love to like be a part of the reboot program, but you know what I'm afraid of, JK? I'm afraid that that maybe, you know, porn isn't the problem. It's a symptom of another. Obviously, we know it's a symptom of another thing. Oh, I'm afraid that maybe this reboot program won't work for me. Right? Maybe I need more one-on-one -on -one help. Maybe I'm not great with accountability. Maybe I won't open up to other guys. Maybe I won't do the work. Maybe the this and this and this and this and this. And I'm just going to do more research. You know, there are two or three things that have worked for me. So I'm going to just stick to those things and, you know, do them a little bit more because there was this one time that I did them right and I was off porn for for, for four months. So that's what I'm going to do this time. The time is going to pass. You're still going to be addicted to pornography. You don't even understand you're playing yourself because you are an addict. And that is how an addict's mind works. Do you understand the game, the insidiousness of the deception that is happening it seems logical to you, but the addict within you weaponizes every irrational thought, every excuse. But when you strip all of that away, which is what I do on this podcast, and look at the raw facts, the raw facts is you are still not in control of your behavior. And that is the only thing that matters. Are you in control or are you not in control? That is it. Nothing else. And if you have been trying this stuff 
for four, five, six, some of you freaking 10 years. You should be ashamed of yourself if you've been listening to me from day one and you still haven't worked with me. For 10 years, you've been doing these same things and you're still, well, yeah, you know, I binge sometimes. It's definitely lessened over the years, but I'm still unhappy and still feel like a piece of shit. You are playing yourself, brothers. When we bring it back to this particular issue, the same thing. We get confused by our behavior. We think that it is the type of pornography we are watching. Don't worry about that. It is not about the type of pornography. Don't worry. Oh, am I a pedophile? Why do I do the incest thing? Why is it? Why am I watching gay porn? Why am I? Stop freaking out about this. Separate it from everything. It is attached to some other issue. For some, it does require therapeutic intervention. For some, it only requires separation. Pull it, break that mountain down and put up a little pile, a little hill. Okay, this is something separate. And just focus on your reboots and see what happens. That's my message for you guys today. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out-of-control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn-Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is, if you're not sure where to start but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.